TV streaming service Aereo is under the gun from TV networks on one side and a copycat service on the other as the battle for the future of broadcast TV rages on. And it's the copycat that may actually be a bigger threat to Barry Diller backed Aereo. It was originally known as Aereo Killer and was located at BarryDriller.com until Diller sued over the name. It operated using much of the same technology as Aereo to transmit broadcast TV signals over the web. But here's the catch. While Aereo has been successful in court challenges, Aereo Killer has not. And late last year, a California court ordered the service to shut down. And if that precedent is held up nationwide, it could spell the end for Aereo, too. That is, by trying to replace Aereo, Aereo Killer could kill them both. So, what's the latest on Aereo Killer and what are the company's motives? We are joined now by founder Alki David. Who joins us from London? Alki, welcome to Bloomberg West. A lot of talk about you guys in the last 24 hours. How exactly did Aereo Killer come about? Hi, Julie. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, first of all, uh, Aereo Killer um, is um, a subsidiary of Filmon.com, which is the uh, the parent company. Uh, Filmon has been in existence since 2006. We've been streaming live television since 2008. Uh, whereas, in fact, we first tested the technology that we've re-employed today uh, some years ago. So copycat, I, I think, is a, is a wrong description. We've been in this game a lot longer. Uh, I think taking advantage of uh, Barry Diller, ICs, and aerial killer success in, on the East Coast is good. I, 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 I think it's really important to understand that what we've got now is that we've got two federal courts with a split decision, the Ninth Circuit and the Second Circuit, both with opposing views. Uh, ultimately, this, uh, our appeal is coming up on, uh, in the summer sometime, uh, where we've got the support of companies such as Google and Electronic Frontier and uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation and other large uh, uh, bodies in, uh, in uh, the space and in, uh, you know, who look after the, um, uh, the public's, uh, the public's um, uh, general well-being. So um, right. we believe that right. we will, yeah, go on. Let me, just, let me just talk about the legal issues at hand. A New York court has sided with Aereo. A California court has sided against Aereo Killer because that same precedent in New York was not binding in California. Both cases are under appeal. What are your goals here, though, with this service? Are you trying to put Aereo out of business? Or are you trying to put the TV broadcast networks out of business? Look, uh, Filmon owns a broadcast station in Los Angeles, and uh, we have uh, uh, both myself and uh, and my core team have all been a part of uh, the film and television business, uh, you know, ad infinitum. So the, we're not here to put anybody out of business. We're here to uh, uh, really establish ourselves as a virtual cable platform, which is has been our argument all along. You know, this split decision is ultimately uh, probably going to end up in the Supreme Court because of this split decision. And uh, as a result of that, companies such as ourselves, uh, Filmon and Aereo, will end up being regulated like a cable system. Uh, the difference uh, being today that uh, under the Aereo decision, uh, we don't have to pay uh, any royalties to the broadcasters, which I, I personally think is wrong, um, simply because content needs to be paid for. And, uh, it's an interesting the... question. It's an interesting question, Alki, that, as you say, could end up uh, with the Supreme Court because, you know, if you can get these TV signals for free, if you put up a pair of rabbit ears, why shouldn't it be available via Aereo or Aereo Killer or whatever it's called? News Corp is now threatening to take Fox off the air, become a cable-only pay TV channel. Experts tell us that other broadcast networks could follow suit. Do you think that could happen? Well, the, well, the, 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 that will a never happen. It's the most idiotic statement. I think it's probably taken out of context, because that that is an idiotic statement, and no self-respecting CEO of a broadcast station would say that. Uh, it would open up an enormous opportunity for other independent broadcasters, other smaller TV networks, to take advantage of a of a vacuum in the market. You know, there is plenty of money being made today through the advertising that free-to-air signals are getting. So what uh, that I, you know that statement I cannot believe was made in context. I, it has to but be But it taken was made. Chase Carey, Chase Carey, the COO of News Corp, said that yesterday at a presentation to the National Association of Broadcasters. 
Well, you know, that's, that's why he's the COO and not the CEO. So where do you see this going, Alki? You know, what, what is the, the ultimate lay of the land, you know, a few years from now? Look, uh, technology is there to deliver uh, live television to, uh, to all sorts of devices and objects and projections and, you, you know, what have you. Televi you know, the, the uh, television industry theoretically should be embracing uh, opportunities such as uh, film on end areas, but uh, you know there is a reason. There are some very specific reasons as to why they're not, and they just need to get past these reasons. So, what do you think is the future of broadcast television? Do the four broadcast networks live on as they are? Look, uh, distrib it's ultimately it's about distribution and eyeballs. And there will be a lot more distribution, a lot more eyeballs available. You know, the the uh, at the core of this problem is got nothing to do with rights management. It's got nothing to do with uh, with really control. A lot of people in the major networks want television everywhere, but the problem, the fundamental problem, is the Nielsen rating. The moment that that is challenged, the 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 closed game of the Nielsen. Uh, the Nielsen, uh, dare I, you know, people won't like this, but the Nielsen scam will be, uh, will be unearthed. And then there'll have to be a new method by which advertisers, ad agencies, and broadcasters make their money. They'll have to revise the way they do it and how they, uh, you know, how they audit the viewing figures. So what is your plan then for the future of what was called Aereo Killer and, and what, what is it really called now? Look, um, it's... It's a, being, it's a subsidiary of Filmon. It's now called Filmon X. Uh, you know, enough, enough uh, promoting the competition's brand. And uh, we're back to uh, Filmon and Filmon X. We are in 35 markets across the USA as opposed to the one that Aereo is in. And uh, we're also a worldwide platform. As of today, uh, the uh, Windows 8 app of uh, the Filmon player is in... Uh, 10 is in the top 10 of every single world market. So we're more than just a, a, a stateside platform. We're a worldwide platform. We make our own content. We aggregate. We pay for content. We have over 200 channels. And um, I, we're a very, very different proposition to Aereo. Well, we will be following your case as well as Aereo's Alki David, uh, Aereo Killer founder and chairman of Filmon from London today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.